What's going on here? Former Patriot, Super Bowl 51 champ, Gino Grissom here. Uh, you're listening to Boston's Big Three, presented by Ride the Wave Media. Welcome back to Boston's Big Three, presented by Ride the Wave Media, episode 85 wrapping up 2020 with a bang probably got one more episode in us before this this year is all said and done before we we kick it to the curb and say good riddance but uh we, there's a, we've got a lot to talk about because we haven't been together in a few days a few weeks now uh it's christmas like boston's season. big it's like boston's big two now yeah like boston's, it's just the boston's big two <laughs> MIA, you need a milk <laughs> carton with with, Staff- the, with their faces on we could do that i could throw something together like that stafford stafford you know, came in as an intern and then like got on the show as a regular (laughs) and then he got into the big leagues and said, screw you guys. I'm going to go focus somewhere else. I got my own show, which he's been completely consistent on all year. And then uh, Tyler just uh, comes and goes. He got a new laptop though. So he should should be able, (laughs) he's he's getting to the big leagues now too, but I mean, back with a force. And then just like between like my schedule going all over the place with the babies and uh just our world we live in right yeah. now too it's just fucking it's crazy but we'll, we're gonna we're, 2021 we gotta look forward to it 2021 is gonna be fun we, we gotta we gotta, we gotta bring it back it. Here. right because 2020 everyone ever like I'm, I'm sure you're sick of hearing it at this point i'm sick of hearing it at this point oh it's been a tough year it's been a hard year things just aren't the same we're all going through crap we're all in the same boat something like that but 2021 is gonna be fun I, it's like uh it's like looking at a stock seeing it go up and down stock went down stocks coming back up for for 2021 but big things coming tyler's coming back with a new computer joe will be back soon uh big things coming from stafford and matthews getting their own getting their own uh program going on on apple Podcasts and spotify soon so they are they're going to be a, officially a separate entity soon but still still part of the the bb3 family got big things so the last few weeks that we've missed the Patriots lost again to the not again but lost again to the Dolphins pretty tough to watch the Patriots the last two weeks I don't even know if we've talked about the Rams game um earlier Oops. either just the fact that the Patriots haven't scored a touchdown since since I was 21 years old <laughs> I uh happy birthday I, I uh <laughs> I uh it's tough. I think we did talk about that Rams game. I think we did have an episode before this. Uh, in terms of the Dolphins game, the thing that I just don't get, Brendan, and we're going to go back and forth. This is perfect because you're still Cam Newton's supporter, correct? Oh, yeah. Cam, you got to support the guy. You got to support okay. the, 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 the guy that's leading the team. This is going to be a beautiful conversation for both <laughs> oh, of us because I'm, I'm, I'm the anti. I'm the anti Cam. You guy, over him? Right? Like, and it's, it's going to go both ways. And, and Watabi, I'm getting sick and tired of people making every single excuse out of the book for Cam Newton. And when it comes to the Miami game, the excuses that I'm hearing afterwards were the defense wasn't there. The defense gave it up. And the defense got gashed. I get it. They got gashed. They are the seventh, the set, they are the the sixth worst defense when it comes to rushing. And I believe the stat was they were giving up 133 rush yards a game. All right, yeah. they're the sixth worst in the league. But guess what? They're the seventh best in the league for points per game. So if you're giving up about 20 points per game, which they're giving up 21 and a half, that's not that bad. They're sixth, they're seventh best in the league, which means your offense just isn't scoring. Like that's right. where it comes down to. And it was six to nothing at halftime. So your your defense shut it down in the first half. So, and I know, I know you like throwing this stat out there. When was the last time Cam Newton threw a touchdown? The last time Cam Newton threw a touchdown, Stidham threw a touchdown <laughs> more recently than Cam Jeez. Newton. The last time that he threw a touchdown was the Chargers game. I forget. That's, a, that's the, the last touchdown point. in general. It, it's just a long, long time ago. And even in that Cam Newton game against the Chargers, I'm sorry, but he wasn't that great either. It was it, – because guess what? Marcus Mariota looked great against the Chargers. Yeah, he, he came in for Derek Carr last week, and and he looked great. So anybody looks good against the Chargers, and that I just, I just here's the thing. Another thing too, Brendan. I just was talking about this right before we got on here. This, I think we're talking about it to you. So today, as we're as we're filming it, it's Saturday. 
Uh, the Bucks played today. Tom Brady throws for four touchdowns today in the first half. And, C- and Cam Newton only has five rushing, t- uh, five passing touchdowns, right? This whole entire season. All in, and what I like to do is I like to stir the pot, obviously. I like yeah. to go on there. The brand. It's not racist. <laughs> it's not slander. When you say the word slander, you're, you're slandering Cam. Slander means false information. I am not giving out false information. Is it false information to say that Cam Newton fumbled in Buffalo? It's not false. It happened. Is it false information but to that, say Cam Newton only has five passing touchdowns? You're saying no, it's not false information. So racist. That's so so problematic. You're only saying that because he's a black quarterback. I, and yet, and yet, I I support other black players. It has nothing to do with race. I'm 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 a Sony Michelle defender. <laughs> I I defend that guy because I think he's good. And and it just it makes whatever. My thing, Brandon, for this conversation is. He has five passing touchdowns. That is like 30. I just looked it up as I was coming here and driving. It's about 37th in the league for passing touchdowns. It's bad, right? There's probably backups well, that have more than that. Like I would assume like, yes. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like two with tag of is like a backup anymore. But I think Joe know, Burrow might have more. Joe Burrow <laughs> might have them beat honestly too. Yeah. I know exactly but, what you mean. But with Tobby, the thing is, and I get this all the time. Well, Cam Newton's got 11 rushing touchdowns. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. He's got 16 total touchdowns in the season. That's not fucking good. That's still not good. And even if you what combine those, but, but Brendan, if you combine those together in 16 touchdowns and say they're all passing touchdowns, you're still 20th in the league yeah. for quarterbacks. You're not what? even in the, you're not even in the middle. You're still below average. Defense so and special teams have more than Cam Newton? They, they might. They like, it just, it's just, close. it's just, it's just, it's just crazy to think that if you want to throw that rushing touchdown stat, cool, go throw it at me. He's still 20th in the league right now. He's not catching up to anybody else. And then someone else, Brendan, before I let you talk, someone's like, well, Pat Mahomes does rushing touchdowns. Pat Mahomes has six rushing touchdowns in his entire career. He has two this year. He doesn't run in for the ball like Cam Newton does. So it's just the excuses, Brendan. I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of the excuses. And, uh, I just, when are people just going to open their eyes a little bit more? Just say like, maybe Cam doesn't have it. Maybe Cam doesn't have it. Maybe he doesn't have it. And listen, listen, you know, Matt Stafford, Carson Wentz, uh, Phillip Rivers, you know, uh, whatever, Dak Prescott, you can start naming these quarterbacks. If Belichick wants to play the Band-Aid quarterback, I'd still keep Cam Newton. Because you know what? Cam Newton's been here for a year or he's been here for a season in the system. I would stick with him personally. So it's not me being hypocritical. It's just that Cam Newton's not your guy. And I don't trust anybody coming in here for two years to pick up the pace and do it unless your name is Aaron Rodgers or like Pat Mahomes or something like that. You have to be an elite (laughs) quarterback or Tom Brady somehow comes back. But I don't want, if you're going to do a Band-Aid quarterback, just stick it out with Cam Newton. I will will give Bill that credit if he wants to go that route and still develop Stidham and still develop another quarterback. If that's what you really want to go for, I'll, I'll, I'll run with that pain, and I will go with it. But I'm just telling everybody, Cam Newton's not going to be winning you football games to get you into the playoffs. Right. Here's my thing. So I'm one of those fans who has probably seen the Patriots. I've, I've only seen the Patriots miss the playoff once. It was 2008, and now this year is the second time I've ever seen the Patriots miss the playoffs. So this is this whole situation is is unique to me. I feel like it's it's unique for a lot of Patriots fans right now because they've gained a lot of fans the last ten years when all they all they've known is well, winning. Well, with Tobby, like they they missed it in two thousand two, and I was in like I was probably only like eleven or twelve years old. So like even for someone like me at nearly thirty years old, I know we have like a little age difference, right. but that still didn't matter to me as a kid. Like oh, you know, yeah, your, yeah. your mind doesn't process it like the way we do now. <laughs> exactly. So like pretty much our whole entire quote unquote you know, teenager to adulthood is always known as winning. Yeah, exactly. So it's a weird situation where you want to be a fan of the team. Like I'm, I'm one of those guys, I'm going down with the ship. I feel like you might be too. Would you say that? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. Uh, the, the, the fact is they, they got six wins this year. They, they're a team that should probably <laughs> so only far, have three so or four. Far. So far. I mean, they could still finish eight. They eight. Them like, out, they, yeah. They still. Keep they can still out. finish seven and nine. Like it's not that's seven, finishing seven nine is not terrible. It's it's really not. It's not respectable, but I I mean, it could be respectable. Looking at some of the wins, I mean, like you beat teams that you weren't supposed to beat, and then lost to the teams that you were probably 
were supposed to win. Like you, like the, they beat the Ravens. They beat the Cardinals. I feel like you're not supposed to win those games, but you. They shouldn't have beat the Cardinals, though. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You just look at but, some of but, these games are just giveaways. But they still held themselves close with Kansas City. Right. They still held themselves close with Seattle. They held themselves close with Buffalo in that first right. game. So the Denver game could have been a that was a toss up as well too. So it's not like they. It's not like they're getting blown out every single right. week. It's not like they're playing like the Rams game. They got blown out, right? right. It's not like they played like that the entire season. Right. So, because you now you got to look at the numbers and say, what is Cam Newton capable of doing? I think we have seen what his peak is. I think, uh, I think a lot of people were just kind of expecting like a breakout performance. I think uh, either the Seattle game or the Houston game this year were, were those breakout performances for Cam, and that's all, that's as much as you're going to get out of him. Like you can't ask for more than what he's going to to give you consistently. I think what his average is maybe 170 something in that range yards per game, um, yeah. and maybe probably average little less than a touchdown and it's probably on the ground because we've already talked about the touchdown situation but I think you got to look at what the peak for Cam Newton is going to be and versus what the peak of Jarrett Stidham is going to be which the problem is we haven't seen a full game from Stidham yet whereas you have seen what probably 10 full games from Cam Newton so far um, that he's actually starting the very first snap and finishing the game out to the, the final kneel down or final final play whatever it may be um, so you got to look at what the ceiling is going to be and I think that I think I would be s- sort of swayed at this point with you, even though I haven't seen Stidham, I think he's probably got a ceiling that's higher than 180 yards per game. Um, so you've got to, you've got to take a look at him now and see what the, uh, what you have in store for the future. If that's the guy that you want to go forward with, uh, because I, we have seen the peak cam new and even, even look at cam's peak numbers, what 370, 360 yards against Seattle. Can Jared Stidham do that just once? If he could do that once in one in a sixteen Stidham game Stidham, season, he's the guy. Can, can Jared Stidham? I and again, this is where people will say, "Well, Cam rushed the ball." Like you know, he's he's had multiple right. games where he's had multiple rushing touchdowns. Right? Can Stidham just throw two touchdowns a game? Can he have yeah. a multiple touchdown game? And, and I think Stidham Cam can Cam Cam. The same I, I just I just I just look at I look at Cam Newton and I say, we see like you said, you see his peak. His yeah. throwing mechanics off. If you want to make any excuses for him, it's not COVID. It, it's not, you know, oh, he doesn't have wide receivers. And they don't get separation. Oh, his O-line. The O-line's actually pretty good this year. I, yeah. I was trying to look up the O-line stats and I couldn't find it, but I know they're top 10 in the in the year. But uh, Cam's throwing mechanics are not going to get fixed within the next 200 days. Right. And I say 200 days because that's when training camp comes back. And, like, it, it's just not going to magically get better. And Cam had a full year going into this season healthy wise like you know he's healthy yeah he looks great he's in shape i want to get on cam's case because he did all these hype videos we believed in it and you and you wanted to buy into it and you could say well the pats playbook isn't the same way and it's hard to learn the system and there's certain ways you can make excuses and there's certain ways you can't he's a professional athlete a former mvp i don't give a shit you should be able to come in here and do something uh, a little <laughs> a little bit better than what you what you showed us um and, and it's a disappointing season. Can Cam bounce back? I believe in Cam still, just not with the Patriots. I just don't – I want to move forward. And right. I'd but, rather have Bill just be outspoken and say – I just want him to be outspoken and say, we're sticking with Cam next year. We're developing this kid and, and, and just give you kind of right. a light at the end of the tunnel that you know where we're going to go instead of just being us in the dark like Cam right and now. And now looking back at the beginning of the season, I think one of the big things for Patriots fans, I know myself – um, I think I think this is def- definitely speaks for me is the fact that we had a new quarterback for the first time in 20 years. I think there was a lot of uh, excitement that might have been clouded. It might have been disguised as just curiosity. I think everyone was just kind of curious to see what what Bill, what Josh could do with a new quarterback that we, we don't know if he was going to be an MVP for him. And he obviously has not been, uh, but just being curious as to what that offense could be capable of. Um, it was def- there's definitely a difference between excitement and curiosity. I think the excitement was pretend. I think Pats fans just didn't know what to channel that emotion. It was all curiosity at a certain point. It's one of those things that we're going to have to just wait until a couple seasons go down the line to look back on things. It's just, right. it's all in retrospect because we don't know only Bill knows. And even Bill might not know what the hell's going on either. Right. He's just rolling with up. He's riding the wave. Right. But when I look at say Stidham, 
So say if Stidham was going to be the next guy, he started week one. Those are the biggest shoes you're going to fill. Right. And you are not going to compare yourself to Brady at right. all. Just the way we're doing just, it right just now. The, just the emotional factor, just like the, the headspace that would take up. But just the, just right now, uh, we'll compare Cam Newton to Brady. And exactly. everyone's always going to compare to Brady. But now, say, if Stidham starts next year. It makes it easier. Can, it makes it a little bit easier. It's like, well, Brady, Brady's gone. He's been out for a year now. Right. Like, we already went through it. But this kid looks a little bit better than Cam Newton, actually, exactly. last year. See, that's and what you got to he... scale it as. You, you can't you can't keep going back to Tom Brady. No one's ever going to be Tom Brady again. Yeah, so I think that if you went through that bad year with Cam Newton and say, this is his stats, this is the wins, right. can Stidham at least replicate that at his young age and be a better, slightly better, then you're like, okay, we got some progress. And I think that just changes the media and the fan base's mind going forward, even though Bill doesn't care about anybody. Do you think, do you think, that, that do you think that's part of the decision-making process right now? I think, I think, I think that's a theory. I mean, there's yeah. any theory you want to throw out there is, is, is something good. It's, it's that Stidham, that's a lot of pressure to go into right. this new season and be like, here you go, kid. Like Brady just ended his career. It's time for you. He's in a way protecting Stidham. Somehow. I would be so scared if that were me. Like the fact that like you're replacing that guy, like yeah. not just any guy. He's like the greatest. Everyone, ev- everyone across the world knows who that. Like, is. does he want Stidham to go through a full season? And and I would go with the growing pains. Right. Like even if they went four and twelve, like that's fine. I want to grow with him. But can he handle that media pressure every single week of like Hearing Brady's doing this, kid, over over and over. Brady's yeah. doing that, Brady's doing this. Once that one season goes away with Brady and Tampa, and, and they're hot right now, they're getting real hot. And once that one season goes, I think fans are going to accept it. Everyone's kind of moving on. All right. right. It's a little bit in the past and, and maybe it's a little bit more relaxed. So, I, I mean, again, there's these small decisions. Like, again, we, we should, I think we both are in agreement. We want to see what Stidham has. Yeah. We, we just want it's to the see same curiosity. We, we're not but, excited. We're curious. We want to know. Does Bill want to expose Stidham to his division rivals? Right. Does he want to expose Stidham to injury like and get hurt in these final two games? Because if right. he gets hurt and he goes down with an ACL, now you're really you're, – he's not coming back next year. Back. Yeah. He's not coming back next year. Now you're really screwed. So it's it's one of those spots where fans don't realize that, you know, fans like think they're the GMs and the coach just like, like we do. But they're like, well – you know, Bill sees Stidham in practice and doesn't start him. So there's de- that's definitely enough. It's like, dude, like the, you can progress. I think Stidham progressed this year in small doses. He came in. Yeah. He threw a couple pick sixes. Yeah. Cool. But he came in through a couple touchdowns as well, too. He had a couple plays in his mop up duty, like say against the chargers, he threw a touchdown. Like he needed to do that. Like it's not, like now, he went in there through an interception. Now we have to look, I'm curious. I'm sure you might be curious about this. Has Stidham thrown more, touchdowns than cam newton if you add the pick sixes <laughs> it might be uh, it might be close five. i think he i think he threw three interceptions i think he threw two pick sixes this year i think he threw I one pick has he thrown any other touchdowns other than the gun uh who uh yeah he threw one in to kill harry against kansas city okay okay and yeah then, he's got two touchdowns in the season so we got we got three guys I don't think Brian Hoyer's thrown a touchdown, right? No, and Jacoby Myers is the only other one. All right, so we yeah, got three on Rex the roster. Burkhead. Rex Burkhead had three receiving touchdowns this year. That's big. That's big. Will yeah, he be back I, next year? Is he three eighty? I, I say, I say he's somebody. So they they just had the list out. Okay. Um, some big names that you have to sign. Like let's just say right. for starters, like Joe Tooney and right. David Andrews, both both free agents. Like you, you want to sign both of them. You want to keep this O line intact. Then number two is you have Rex Burkhead, which I think they should sign. I think they, because of his injury, I think he's like worth at least picking up on a cheap deal. And totally. Rex isn't going to get a, a contract. I don't think somewhere else. James White's another guy that I would sign just to keep him as a veteran leader. Um, and but will James White secure his bag somewhere else? I think he's worth throwing money at if you're like a, t- a team like the say like the Giants did it with uh, with uh, what's his face. The, the, not uh, Shane Vereen, like they did it with oh, Shane Vereen. They threw money. They threw money at him. Deion away like from the, the Dion Lewis got money through the Titans. Like just yeah. sh- sh- stuff like that. Um, you know, there's there's a whole slew of players that you have to sign this off season, and I mean it's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting to see who they right. end up keeping, who they don't keep. I I look at the uh, upcoming draft, Brendan, and I just think that. Stidham's a Stidham staying like it's not like Stidham's gonna get cut like right, he's here he's for four contract. years. If it is the start, he's still a backup next right. year. So I look at 
are you going to go for Matt Stafford? If you draft a quarterback, they're not starting this year. Like, no, no, I don't care who you get unless they got Trevor Lawrence. That's the only guy that will start, but it's not happening. So if you get Matt Stafford, if you get a Sam Darnold, a Dak Prescott, the move has to happen right away. Like, right. and I look at Cam Newton and if you're going to extend Cam Newton, it's got to happen in January. Like, but I look at Cam Newton. I personally think Cam Newton can get a contract somewhere else for more money. I, right. I really think he's worth something. I I just, I personally don't want Bill to give him a $10 million contract to make up for this year and be like, here you go, here's money. And be like, we could have used that money somewhere else, especially we have to sign all these other guys. And I think that Bill might want to wait till free agency opens up. And I'm sure Cam does too. Um, but that March, like, like, in March coming up, it's you're going to know what's going to happen this season. Right. You're going to know right away what the direction is going into. Um, and if – I mean, you just – you can't you can't do what you just did last year and wait till June to pick up somebody. Like, they, they have to get this settled in early on. So, uh, it's going to be interesting. And, and keep an eye out, too, for uh, Josh McDaniels. I think he's gone. I think he takes a head coaching job somewhere. Um, I, I, and these head coaching jobs go right in January, right before the right. Super Bowl. They go quick. So if there's, he's going to get offers. And I just think that again, a lot of things have to, ha- it's a, it's a very important, this is like the most important off season for the Patriots. Cause it's going to set up your future. Like this is it. Like you had your one year, you fucked around. The cap space wasn't there. It's your transition year from Br- uh, Brady. You get this one year off that you're allowed one year off from right. the 20 years of dominance. But it's every move that you make this offseason needs to be a home run. It has yeah. to be. Like, you have to hit this right. Like, okay, McDaniels leaves. Who's replacing him? There's been rumors about Bill O'Brien coming back and Bill O'Brien becoming the offensive coordinator. I wouldn't mind that. Um, Jed Fish just left as the quarterback's coach. I've been preaching. Brian Hoyer. Easily slide him into the quarterback's coach position because he's going to probably retire. Yeah. Um, What's Gerard you know, Mayo this- up to these days? Yeah, it's just it's just like you can have, um, you know, maybe Hightower. Like, what's his situation going to be? Are some of these players retiring? You need to you need to start figuring this shit out uh, as early on as possible. So, right. I hope that they have the quarterback situation at least figured out heading into the NFL draft, and better than what they did last year. Right. And if you're going into that NFL draft and you don't have another quarterback signed on that team other than Jared Stidham, that means they're going with Stidham. Like, it's like. They're not going to fuck around again with this. Well, we'll take Stidham. We won't draft anybody. We'll pick up a couple of free agents. We, we just yeah, and, and, we'll see what happens. And the thing about the Cam Newton free agency is it's not going to be, it's not going to be a splash. It's not going to be a LeBron making a decision. It's no. be, oh, Cam Newton's available. And, all right. It's going to be like that, like the video you, you posted from the, with, with Odell Beckham sitting around the table. Like, uh, yeah, Odell Beckham, uh, Cam Newton pass. I feel like, like there's going to be a lot of teams. Again, I just I and it all depended on and I mean if I'm if I'm Cam Newton, this guy might hold out. Like he yeah. might say, like, Bill might I think Bill's gonna make him an offer and say, here's four million dollars, here's five million dollars, uh I two for two years, ten million tops. It's like that's what right. we're gonna offer you. But uh Bill's gonna say, I want a decision soon. Like I want a decision by the end of the week. Or and Cam's gonna be table. like and I'm pulling or I'm pulling it. And and Cam's gonna be no. Cam's going to want to wait till free agency. Cam might want to wait till after the draft. He might want to see how Jacksonville shakes it out. He might want to see how this team shakes it out. That team shakes it out. And I, I still think that Cam, I think Arizona should take Cam Newton. I think he can go down there for $10 million a year. Cause that's veteran. It's a veteran presence down there. Have a help Kyle Murray out, but, in, but does Cam Newton want to accept the backup position? There you go. It's just, just these little things that have to fall into place. And I just think that bill, um, you, you can't wait. You can't wait. And if and if people want to make that excuse that, well, Cam Newton didn't come too late into the season, uh, all right, I'll give you that one. That's cool. They should have got this figured out back in March. Like, get yeah. this done right away so the guys can get the playbook, so they can start practicing, and they can get ready to go. Uh, I know that COVID, like, fucked everything up, and you really couldn't do anything, and they're just doing Zoom meetings. But um, I don't know. I just – I feel like – these last two games, like, like, what is Cam Newton playing for? Is he playing for a contract for next year? Is he, is he being showcased on Monday Night Football? Is this his last starting uh, game on a nationally televised game on ESPN? Like, right. it, like, what, what's the point? Are you trying to make sure that you're getting his ninety percent incentives and making sure he gets every last penny of that incentive contract? Uh, I just, I, I, is Bill, Bill just must be fucking loyal. He must be super loyal 
to Cam to be like, I'm, I'm riding with you, dog. I'm, I'm with you to the very end. Hey, I don't if, care. If, if Bill can stick with Tom Brady for 20 years, I'm sure he can stick with Cam Newton for an entire season. I mean, I mean, I, in, in terms of like, they say this on the radio about him losing the locker room. I mean, Bill could use this season as a way to say, you know what? I stuck with my guns. Was it the right decision? Yes and no, but I didn't leave my decision. I stuck with the guy because I believed in him and I believed him all the way through. And that's just how Bill is as a coach. And that's whisper, why I said whisper, Brendan. Super Bowl 52. And, and that's why I say, Brendan, that that someone like Cam Newton is forever going to be grateful to Bill Belichick and, the, and Robert Kraft and the Pats organization, even if they split. There's no bad blood between both of them. There's no bad blood with the fan base that, that support him. They're still right. going to support him. They're still going to go from Carolina to Massachusetts to wherever he goes. And whoever he picked up along the way is still going to follow his journey because Cam never did anything bad this season to piss anybody off except no, his, yeah. his playability, just his playability. Yeah. And, and you, you again, can't be upset about it. You can't be upset about that. Like, yeah, you can be disappointed that he's not performing to your expectations, but then again, he's also not meeting his own expectations. That's like showing his leadership. And I think um, the Patriots players have been very adamant about him showing that uh, and then just displaying that this, this, we love this guy. Like this guy is a leader. He is vocal. He is going to try to do his best to take us to a W each and every week. And I think the players are just trying to reciprocate that to the fans. And I, I don't think it's worked at all this year. I mean, I don't, I don't hate Cam Newton as the individual. Right. I just, I, I just know you're not our answer. I'm right. sorry. It's like, it, should that offend you? No, like just play better then. just change yeah. my mind. Like do it on the field. Totally. Like let me, Oh, I want to openly support you. Like I, we, I have your fucking picture that <laughs> Brendan made hope. Love, like we want to, we want to promote that shit. We want to support you, but I'm gonna this year. I I've been more realistic about the team. I've been more open about things, which isn't good because I'm not that biased person anymore. Now we're post Tom Brady. The goggles yeah. are off. Let's look at the team, like what for what it is. Cam Newton, you're not a good quarterback this year. Like you are not a good quarterback. And I and I'll give I'll keep giving you the benefit of the doubt. Like I'll keep doing that for you. But uh, people are saying your time is up and. If you move on, and I've been harping on it for the last, you know, weeks and weeks that you're not the guy, does that mean I'm going to go bash you wherever you go in the future? No. If I think, and personally, I said this, I think he's worth money somewhere else. I think a team should sign him. I'd be happy to be like, the Patriots picked him up. They took him on a cheap contract, didn't work out, but that guy got a job somewhere else. They helped him out. That's just another another step along the way, yeah. So uh, we've got Monday Night Football tomorrow night. Bills, Patriots, and apparently, according to ESPN, the Patriots just aren't playing this game. The, the Bills are just going to show up and, and score forty cent something on the Patriots. Um, what do you What are your thoughts going into to Monday Night Football tomorrow? I'm. I mean, it's 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 Monday. it's a huge game for Buffalo because they they're trying to keep that two seed. Like it's 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 they have to be on all cylinders going forward into this game Monday night. Uh, they have a chance to lock up the two seed, which is crazy because it's not even a bye week. But it's still in that terms of positioning uh, for positioning for playoffs, like you want to be the two seed. Um, you know, it's 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 it sucks because there's no fans there. And I think that even if there were fans there and they had the same record, uh, Buffalo fans would be swarming that stadium, and it would have been just an awesome yeah. atmosphere to be in. You've already seen uh, that billboard. I know. So I'm like, it's bolt and board material right there. Like you, you still have a sense of pride, and that's what you're playing for. Uh, this is a great way for the Patriots that if they're gonna pull out their tricks and stuff like that and their trick book do it in this game it's nationally televised uh i'm holding i'm holding out hope because fuck it if they can finish eight and eight you're not that's not a losing season it's not, not a losing <laughs> not a winning season but it's not a losing season so you you can because you know they're going to beat the jets and it's just yeah you know they will beat the jets you know that's going to happen you know that they're going to tank that game still you never know if, if jacksonville here. finds a way to win on sunday tomorrow you mean you never know. You never know. But I just – I look at this game as – it's 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 going to be tough to watch. It's like – it's almost a pride game. You just – you got to hope. You got to pray. You got to say, go out there, give it your best shot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys are still playing. They're playing for both pride, but they're playing for contracts. A lot of guys are still playing for contracts. Don't forget that. So when you look at – when you look at it that way, um, Cam Newton – this is your last shot on nationally tele- uh, television. It's 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 also fantasy football championship week. I don't know if anybody has any players in that in those games for the last game. So 
I just look at it like, Cam, this is your last shot to probably tell anybody to go fuck themselves. Even if you just ball out and have a good game. If And, I mean, if Cam could have a three-touchdown game, and I'm talking about three pass, I want to see him throw the ball. <laughs> If he, hey, I don't care if he about gets running. three touchdowns anywhere, that's more than the last two weeks. But, so. but you want to see that out of him, and you want to see that fight. And, I mean, if he can show fight against the Buffalo Bills, it's like for Patriots fans to be like, well, you know what? Buffalo was trying this game. It's not like they're, they're not taking their foot off the gas pedal. And you beat the AFC East champions, and you know you could have beat them earlier this year. You beat a playoff team, a top playoff team. That should give fans some hope going into next year. Like, all right, this Pats team didn't really – lay down this year they didn't lay down totally did they struggle some games absolutely their game but it's a team that that fought to the very end and and that's what you want to see you want to see them fight for the very end like we said going down with the ship so i personally hope cam newton doesn't do good like i just i don't (laughs) want him because i because i don't want to go into this because if he does good then we're going to be dealing with should cam newton stay and it's just like i want i want it done right I don't want him to be so, embarrassed, but I do. It's, it's, it's terrible. I'm a terrible I'm, guy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they've announced Cam Newton starting tomorrow. Well, we don't know yep. if he's going to finish it. I'm pretty sure he's only finished half the games this season anyways. But week 17 against the Jets, who is starting quarterback for the Patriots? I still say it's Cam because both with the incentive. The yeah, I just think with the incentive, I think Cam starts. I think Cam starts. And then they just see how the score goes. And then maybe at halftime, that's when you make the switch to Stidham, the sec- give him the second half of the game. Um, I-, I think Stidham has Stidham truly earned the starting job. Yes and no. But, like, I-, I just think that if it's week 17, I think Edelman might finally play his last game. And who knows if it's his last game as a Patriot. Yeah, that could he be probably, heartbreaking. I'm sure Edelman probably wants Cam to be out there. Like, I'm sure that he wants to have that connection with him. Right. And I think it would be good for Belichick to just throw Stidham in the second half. The Jets at that point won't even be trying. It's a, just a walkthrough type of game. Uh, be, hopefully it might feel like pre- the preseason during a Week 17 game because, like, neither of us are going to the playoffs. So. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like, say, like a Damian Harris, like, shut that guy down for the rest of the right. year. Like, what's the they point got some good in him. Hurt? You want to talk about you know, hope? Talk about Damian Harris right now. I mean, Sony Michelle needs to play because you. All right, you've been out most of the season. We got to see. You got to get you know film on you. Myers and Harry, they have to play. Like we have to get more film on you. So, I mean, if I, I'd be, I, I, it'd be crazy to see Stidham not play Week 17 just at at least at halftime. And that's no offense to Cam. If Cam has like a good game, I still yeah. think you should pull him for the last half and just hey, we want to get Stidham in there and get him a couple reps to end the season. Like that's how it should be, but. I mean, I, I could I could see Bill just staying with Cam the entire way and saying you're you're taking this, especially if they win tomorrow, and they win tomorrow and they're trying to go eight and eight. Like he's trying to give Cam the win. Like he wants to make sure that he gets the win. So I don't know. I think he sticks with them. All uh, right. Any, any any final thoughts on the New England Patriots? It's been a bad year, dude. Yeah. So like, just, understatement. The, the team sucks. The organization sucks. They held me down. I didn't even get fan of the year. Like, so I, I, I know we're going to save it for later, but Shame I, I on lost, you, New England Patriots. I, I lost, listen, I, and I get it. I say this, I'm very open about it. My content might not be suitable for the Patriots. Sometimes uh, a lot of fans don't like me. I think a lot of it's just jealousy. Uh, some of it, people, you know, people can't respect other people's opinions. That's all it is. is everyone's opinion. Yeah. That's but, what but sports is. My, that's, that's what we're here for. <laughs> that's, that's what we're here for. And it's like, but if, if my opinion, if you don't have my opinion, Brendan, you're a clown. Like that's right. just how social media works. Um, if you don't I agree lost, with me, you're wrong. That's how it is. It I mean, I can, I do that to Tyler Miller. Cause I just like <laughs> doing it to Tyler Miller, but it's just, it's just how it is. The fan of the year didn't work out. So I lost to two guys that have been season ticket members for 50 years. Like, and the grand prize of season tickets. So they want to play the safe route. It's just, I'm disappointed. I'm more disappointed. And then I found out I had a, a gig lined up with ESPN and my name was on the sheet and the Patriots saw it. And they said, Nope, we don't want this kid here. Like we do not want this guy here. Uh, we don't think that he's going to be suitable for uh, working the game. I, I'm like on the terrorist watch list when it comes Man, to New like England. No Patriots. fly. No fly list. And, and, and here's the thing that's crazy. Brendan is we post stuff. Well, I'm not stupid. I've been saying this for years. Like everyone sees what you post. Yeah. The players are seeing what you post. The, the, the organization sees what you post. People around the league are seeing what you post. Uh, it, it's out there. Even if they're not licking, uh, clicking it, they're not liking it. 
they're still seeing it. Like yeah. they're seeing it. So, uh, and I've come to the point where it's like, I'm not here to suck that organization's dick. Like I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm not hired by them. They're not paying me to do anything. I'm going to be open and honest. And my, I, I just, I just want to fucking go back to games, dude. I want to go to tailgates. I just want to have a couple beers with the fans. I miss just what I missed this season. Brendan is just being able to go out, go on my story. Hey guys, it's game day. I'm going to show you my game day experience. That's right. what I built my account on is showing the game day experience, showing what it's like. We're going to be a tailgater 2000, just talking with fans in general in person. And that's the community, why I got to man. a lot of relationships. It's all about the community. community. And people who can come up to me like, I fucking hate you. And then we talk and they're like, oh, you're not a bad guy. That's <laughs> what I'm, that's what I miss. You just got some wild takes sometimes. I do. I miss going to fucking New York and going to the Jets game with Ramon. Like I miss, I want to go to Buffalo again. That was a killer trip last year. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of things going on. And now Justin Zolot's going to be possibly running the Patriots tailgate group that does things uh, for all the away games. So I got my hands mixed in with that. I just, I miss, I miss that. And this year sucked so much because the, there was hope around the team. Uh, then it just, that whole month of, the end of September into October, that October month was so bad when you lost yeah. four games in a row. And it's just like, you just, it felt like the longest time. Yeah. And uh, it's just, then your content suffers. And football and, and season feels, shit. it feels like it usually goes so quick. And yeah. this season has been I think it went a pretty drag. long. It has been, it's such a drag. It's so, that's so true. It's like the just, 20, 2019 Red Sox coming off the championship. The season just like, went on and on. We and know on. the season is ending in two weeks, but it's, and it's almost like, I just want it to end now. Yeah. Just, just, just pull the trigger. <laughs> we're, we're dragging, we're, we're dragging ourselves closer to the finish line where we never have to talk about the 2020, 21 Patriots ever again. I know. And I can't wait. And then we, and we'll have some good off season talks about what we're looking for about the future. Right. And I think the the good thing about this year is you're at least paying attention more to positions and, and you're paying attention to every position across the board, uh, offensive line, wide receivers, defensive line, linebackers, cornerbacks, you know, everything, even kicking game, you know, even look at, look at, look at Bill. He's bringing Roberto Aguayo. He's starting to, he's starting to look at the, kicking. Oh, yeah. what's, what's going on there? Why do the Patriots got three kickers on the roster right now? Well, Justin Rowhouser was, picked in the fifth round and then they found out he's a former neo-nazi or whatever three kickers the three, the that's, three percent. that's like my fantasy well, team well Ju justin rohauser is a hundred percent done like they're gonna cut him he he did not get rid of justin rohauser because i think he didn't want to get rid of a fifth round kicker and be like that that was terrible i'm gonna wait till next year to do that <laughs> he's, he's done i think rohauser hope, knows hope it done. goes by unnoticed and i think that Roberto Aguayo, you bring him in just for a little bit because I think you have a little kicking competition next year between him and Nick Folk, and then you just kind of see who 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 works it out. Because I think Nick Folk definitely deserves another shot. Yeah. I think you should be looking at Nick Folk as a one year to two year type of guy. Like I don't think he's, he's turned some heads this year. He's I think yeah, we no, talked about he, this year. He's been consistent it, the last half. It's crazy to think that he's the same age as Goskowski, and yeah. I and I think that and I, I made a post about it, and I said Bill deserves some credit because. He moved on from Goskowski because he thought his injury would plague him, and that was it. And he thought he might not recover. They had to bring in an emergency kicker. They bring in, they they played around with a couple of them, but they got, Folk came in, and and Folk this season at least has won them games. Like he's yeah. he's kept them in games and won them games. He literally has done his job. He hasn't really screwed up anything. So at his age. Uh, I mean, kickers can last a long time. Adam benetari has been was doing it for that long uh, in his mid forties. So, folk at least knows that he's in a good spot to get signed. You're pleasing Bill Belichick, especially when it comes to special teams. And I, I think folk has deserved a, another shot. I don't think they're going to commit to him right away. I think they want to bring a Roberto Aguayo in just to be like, I'm gonna. I want. He's already looking at his kicking competition next year. But I think folk will win it, and I think you sign folk for two years, and you and you say, hey, you're sticking with us, right. or he might be looking at it like, oh, maybe another team might pick him up. Uh, you know, no, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. You know, uh, a team That's like football. Arizona That's or some shit. Business, like NFL. That. The Arizona could come in and be like, we want Nick Folk to come here. We'll sign you for money. Okay, right. cool. I'll just stick with Roberto Aguayo. We're going to go with this guy. So, yeah. you know, it's just, the Bel again, Belichick playing with things. But, yeah, just to, to close up Patriots talk, I just want to show you. I'm pulling up my telephone right now. Oh, it's off. It's, not, it's off. Cam Newton is not on the back of my phone right now. <laughs> so Cam Newton, I, 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 yeah, I hope he can. I hope 
I don't know what the future holds for him. I hope he can secure his bag, take it to the bank. But uh, well, we we learned some stuff too. I think that gives us personally at Boston's big three. Right. We did a trial run this year for for certain things, and I think that yeah. we can spend the off season now a little bit better to to get ourselves learning, together and, and push merch. Yeah, we're 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 learning a lot and yeah. pushing merch and and things like that. We want to show support uh, to those out there. I mean, just because we promote. <clears throat> uh, a scam Newton shirt, like it is what it is. <laughs> you gotta play for that was not you, but it's just you gotta. You, you just you're putting putting stuff out there, and then you have hope and whatever. Right. Speaking I'm of the, the bank, top. Jason Tatum game winner over Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> uh, the Celtics season has gone off to a rocky ish start. There's been a bright spot, but. Um, I don't think we've been here to talk about the Celtics preseason at all. We had a like kind of uh, predictions earlier, but I don't think we were actually here to talk about their two preseason games. They played the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets lost both those games. Uh, the next two regular season games to start the year beat Milwaukee. Like we just talked about the, the game winning three over Giannis and then got absolutely destroyed in the third quarter by the Brooklyn Nets again, but this time on Christmas day, front of a national TV audience that was probably half asleep, if not already fully asleep because of the, the terrible slate of NBA games. I'm sure Tyler would, would, would rail the NBA right now because I think all those games combined, the total differential was probably a combined like 120 points, something like that. It was just blowouts. Not a single game was close all day. I think all the favorites. Did all the favorites win? So the Clippers I think won they the did. Last... No, yeah. the Lakers, Lakers were probably favored that game, I would guess. No, yeah, the Lakers were favored. They were favored six and a half. They blew it yeah. out. I'm just, I think the Clippers played the Nuggets late in the late night game. Yeah. Um, where Kawhi got his like jaw knocked off. But oh, I yeah, saw I, that. that was that I, crazy. I mean, you started with the uh, it was the Pelicans were the first game. I forget who they played. I I, I did a parlay, a Christmas Day parlay. I took, <laughs> the Pel- I took the Pelicans. I lost right away. I mean, they looked yeah. again. They looked pretty good to start the game. They just got blown out of hand. I mean, for the for the Christmas game. Uh, for the Celtics, since it's fresh on my mind, they were up at three at half. Like they, they, yeah. they were. It was a good. It was a good back and forth game. That third quarter, towards the end of the third quarter, there was just again basketball is about hot and cold. And if you if 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 you get on a good decent run, sometimes it's too too hard to get back into yeah. that game. And the, the third quarter is where those great teams you've seen like in the the Warriors for the last five years, the the, the um, five of the last six years, but. Uh, the third quarter is where those halftime adjustments, you see them immediately. Yeah. You immediately well, well, play out and they end well, up scoring 40 points on you. Yeah, well, for the Celtics take, it was – they were putting up shots. Yeah. But they just weren't going in. Like, there was a lot of, like, balls that were going in and out of that rim. It was just a lot of, like, you're getting down low into the paint, you put it up, and you just miss it. Like, it just right. – and then, and then the Nets would capitalize on the very next play, score, score, score. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point swing. Eight-point swing turns to a 12-point swing. And now right. you're down double digits. And then, it, and then in basketball, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Maybe the Nets go on a quick 6-0 run. Now you're, now you're chasing 18. And it just – once it's too much, it's too much to come back from. And, and that's what it, – it felt like they lost in the third. Once it was the third was done. Oh, it's, yeah. It's they were already – they were down by 20 by the time the third quarter was Yeah, over. yeah. It's just it's, – it just – and, and uh, I mean, when you look at the Nets and Bucks games, if you're looking at the beginning of the schedule, like Felger Maz did it, they split the games. That's fine. Yeah. It's. It, did you think they were going to go two and zero to start the season? We, I, we we talked about it one and one. We said one and one. Yeah. You but can they're split gonna, those I games easily. They're going to go on a run and win like five of the next seven, though. I don't know if that's possible right now, but um, it is interesting. You see the bright spots from the preseason. We haven't got to talk about it. Seeing the additions the Celtics made that look very good to start. Uh, Jeff Teague didn't have a great game against the Nets. Um, I don't think he scored, but he had nineteen the, the day before. So. Uh, not the day before, game before, but the, the additions of, of Jeff T, Tristan Thompson, uh, even Peyton Pritchard. These guys look yeah. like they're going to fill their roles very nicely for the Boston Celtics. I think um, I don't think anyone out there is arguing that Brad Wanamaker was a better sixth man coming off the bench than, than Jeff T has been so far for the Celtics. He's just the Celtics have been needing that. Yeah. This, this this is a team definitely that will uh, they'll find their groove. They'll they'll eventually find the right. groove going right. forward. I mean, it's going to take them. This is still preseason in a way. It's still going to take time. Um, and, and this is a year where Tatum really needs to step up and be a leader. Um, and, and, and uh, more importantly, Kemba Walker, whenever he comes back, I he's ready, you have to play. Like yeah. you, you, 
now it's going to fall on you to actually show up and, and just literally do your job. Be, right. be a, whether you, even it's a role playing position, uh, let Tatum do his thing, but you got to be. That's see, all right. I just, I, every time I get the chance to talk about Kemba Walker, I got to do it. That's my guy. Boston Celtics, yeah. Utah Husky. Uh, so the thing about Kemba Walker is that I think Celtics fans that didn't really know a lot about him that made, made them all love him immediately was the fact that when he joined the team, he wasn't like, he wasn't like the the Kyrie Irving type to come in and say, yeah, my team, I just want to be a leader. I'm going to lead these guys. I'm going to do the best of my ability. He's the guy that came and said, I know whose team this is. This is not my team. I see these two young guys. It is my job to help them get to where they're supposed to be, help them become those superstar players that he knows they're capable of and that they, we are watching them grow before our eyes. Like I remember just like a few, few feels like months ago watching a uh, high top cut, Jalen Brown coming in the league, coming off the bench and, and getting six or seven points off the bench every night. Seeing what he's doing now, scoring 30 a game already for the Celtics, it's fun to watch the growth and development of those guys. And we hope we can see that again with the, the new guys coming in, like Peyton Pritchard, um, who looks like white Rajon Ray, Rondo out there right <laughs> now. And then Aaron Neesmith, who has been a pretty big bucket coming in. Apparently he's a sharp shooter. I have definitely seen that so far. So um, the Celtics team is a lot of fun to watch. I think it's going to be a fun ride. Uh, again, we've talked about it before. We don't know if they have enough. Uh, we Celtics fans are delusional and have wanted us to get to the finals. I mean, we've been right at the doorstep the last three of the last four years. You got to expect they, they'll get through eventually. Um, yeah. So th- there's two topics I want to talk about with Celtics yeah. basketball. Previously on a show, you said the Celtics should tank this year. Do you still stand by that? <laughs> I I I I stand by it in the sense that it's they they should if they have they have something you can see in the first two games they have something. I just say like I just want them to get a high draft pick. That's all. That's the way I look at it. I want oh. them to make noise. They are still they're not the complete team yet. And you say that right? right. Well, that's that's so the same thing with that is, weight team. They had they had Ray Allen. They had um, this is, Paul Pierce, this is, but they weren't a complete team yet. They needed that big ticket. This 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 year is good for the the uh, for Jalen Brown. It's good for Tatum. They got these guys locked up. That's the thing. They got right. these guys locked up. I look at Kemba Walker. Like you said, he comes in. He's 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 not the star player. I just you're paying him this money, so you better. He's got to show up in the certain games. That's, he's got to show up that fair. better. It, it, let Kemba sit all year. Yeah. Let him sit. Let him let him relax. Like what's the point of relax? Because he's gonna be back next year. So that's that's what I'm saying about tanking in that case. Like, hey. Win the first half of the games, then take your foot off the gas pedal the second half. That's okay. That's not a problem. Uh, Tatum fair. Tatum and Brown, we want to see you progress this year in certain areas, maybe certain goals. Do we want you to win the MVP this year, Tatum? You know, it would be cool, but no, we don't need that. We don't, we don't need that. That's, that's the way of the tanking I'm talking about. Uh, I, I mean, if they're, the team gets hot, the team gets hot. You got to roll. You got to win games. You're, you're here to play and win games. Right. Absolutely. Um, if you're, but I think that a certain point in the season, depending on what their record is, that's probably when you're going to start looking at things. Like you got to start looking at things differently. Right. I still, I still don't think the season's going to fully happen. I, are you, are you, I, just, are making you all these, are, all you these a, fucking pictures and stuff. are you in a mindset where like, since my heart's been broken for a few, a lot, it's been broken a lot the last few years watching the Celtics. Are, are you in a mind state where you don't want to get too attached to this team and just get your heart ripped away from you um, at the very end of the season again? I think this might be – so I, I'm, I, when it comes to Celtics, I love the Celtics. Like they're my second team, right, So in Boston. so And I'm casual. I, I just – I don't – I'm not the diehard like you guys are, but I pay attention, right? Um, I think this team, just watching those first two games, they're going to be very likable, the most likable team that you, you – that in the last five years. Like okay. I, I think they're going to be very, very likable. I think they're – I think, like you just said, they're going to attach to a lot of people. I think there's going to be a lot of grit. I think there's going to be a lot of grind. And I just think that because of the the contract that Tatum just got, you know that you got some security now as a fan. You know that you got right. some security with this guy. You can start watching him a little bit differently. You can start watching at the other places here. Um, like you said, Pritchard, like, it's funny. Why Rondo? Talk, talk about racism. <laughs> I got Michelle's Watch the dad. way he play. I'm saying the way yeah, this man plays. Wait, the way, wait a minute. The way he Michelle, scored, the way Michelle, he flashed, the way he passed, that's why Rondo. But Michelle's dad, <laughs> who is in his 60s, 
leans to me the other day on Christmas and goes, Scott's going to become a fan favorite because he's white. A lot of people are going <laughs> to like him because he's white. He's good. He's good. He's going to be a white good. He's going to be a good player because he's white. I was like, that's Boston for you right there. It's <laughs> I mean, just like it's just like the Patriots every year. You're talking about Gunners. Yeah, you're yeah, talking about these white guys, Welker, Gunner, Edelman. So I just I look at this Boston Celtics team and I think that they can go on a run. You'll get attached to them. I just don't think there's enough to win a championship yet. I mean, I mean, right. it's only two games in the season. Anything's yeah. possible. Anyone, any, there's nowhere to go, but um, you could go anywhere. But there's there's still a lot left to play out. We've got 70 games left. We don't even know what the second half of the schedule looks like yet. So yeah, you're talking about the fact that you need to add another piece. I've got one question for you. James Harden? No. No. See, <laughs> Thank you. See, we, I, we can agree on something. So I am all – I mean – would I hate it? No, I, I would love I James Harden. I wouldn't like it. I, I want James Harden. I, I would I, I think that's cool. But that means you have to give up Jalen Brown. Like right. you're gonna have to break up that duo, and I do not want to break up that duo. Right. They that I've I've said you you can't do that. And I have been big on oh, I think Tatum's gonna leave this and that. And he, when he signed that deal, I was I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, like he actually signed that. And I think it was a lot for financial security too, to make sure you secure that now, especially I think the Celtics got very lucky with, with that. So I look at Jalen Brown and Tatum, you need to keep those players together. They're peanut butter and jelly. Like you, you got to keep that, that duo together. If you want to trade for James Harden, that means you got to get rid of the whole other team, like whoever else you want to get rid of. But I I don't think that he will be the answer. I mean, it's just, you did it with Kyrie. We agree. It's a Kyrie situation now. Exactly. If Tatum was not signed to his contract and you had no idea what his future was and you started getting the feeling that you maybe you want to break up the, the Brown thing and whatever you want to do, sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm done with the Harden thing. I know them, even the media, like none of them want, they, they only want up. him. They want him just because they want to talk bad about James Harden. Right. But I think it's just a headache. I I I, I was for it before the season because it's a fantasy thing. But then once you say you see the first couple games, you're like, I'm all set. We we don't need right. to do it. And especially when James Harden starts the season with COVID and screws over the the, the Houston yeah. locker room, and you find just out he went to, strip, behavior. went to the strip club and wasn't wearing a mask and this and that. And that, and that's why I'm saying I don't see how the season's gonna last. Like I just I just these players, no offense, but just these players will go out and do their own thing. Go have fun. We're all human beings. They'll go to strip clubs. They'll go to parties. It's going to happen. And I think that because of the size of these locker rooms and teams, you're not able to cover it up like you can in the NFL and the uh, in the MLB. And the NBA is such a players-driven league that if a couple of players are like, nah, fuck this, we don't want to do it, they're not going to do it anymore. Right. So that's why they only released the first half of a schedule for the season because they don't even know what they're going to be able to do. So um, – that's why I'm saying you be weary, you be cautious and everything like that. I and actually not wanna, that you're heartbroken. I want to throw this over to you. Uh, are the Golden State Warriors already done? Because like, oh, yeah, they, they, Have, they got obliterated to. I think I think it's the cornrows on Steph Curry. I just I oh, don't like no, that. That's look. fine. He's, I, he's he is an aging star, though. People forget Steph Curry's been in the league since like oh nine. Yeah, he's been around for a long time. I actually remember when I was in college. Back in 2010, yeah, I uh, Davidson I, had, I had NBA 2K10 on my Xbox 360, oh. and I made a character, my own personal <laughs> character, and I was drafted to the Golden State Warriors. And I okay. remember playing with uh, Steph Curry, and I don't know when Clay Thompson was drafted. He, was no, he drafted? No. So that, maybe I played 2K12. Maybe that's what I played. I think it was 2K12 and 2K13 because I know Clay was on my team. Okay. So my point of my story is I started the Warriors Dynasty before they started the Warriors <laughs> Dynasty. And if I had that game on my Xbox, I bet I can find it. So it's uh, my name the reason, was, my name the reason was, they got those championships then. My name was Quincy because you got to make a player's name. It was right. Quincy something. Uh, fuck, now it's going to. Now nah, it's going to bother me because it's like an announcer says it over there. Anyways. Got to represent South So Coast. I just wanted to say Steph Curry has been in that, has been with the Warriors for a long yeah. time. He's an aging star and Curry's made his money. Curry's made, had his championships. He's done his MVPs. He's, he's done it all. So you, at, at, if, if you want to compare teams, look at that 2019 Patriots and the 2020 
uh, Golden State Warriors, say Tom Brady, Steph Curry, leading the way, you got scrubs all around. Like your guy goes yeah. down, Julian Edelman goes down, Clay Thompson goes down. A lot of parallels. Yeah. Though. You bring in a lot of scrubs to to fill fill the gas, but they're not the same. And, and what are those players going to, I mean, you lose Kevin Durant, you brought Kevin Durant right. in, see you later. And you bring, you know, is Clay, where's Clay Thompson going to go? Is he going to be the same? Like, is Draymond Green the same? Like, it's just, that that team could be broken up pretty soon. Uh, do you give totally, any credit? I totally see that. I just, I bet on them and I was like, holy shit, they suck. Like, I didn't know they suck again. Yeah. But uh, that, that also shows to me, like, <clears throat> they, they did that height of a dynasty and they, and they, that's cool when you win all that. They're going to lose their fan base pretty quick. Yeah, it, the fall from glory in, is dramatic. We live in such a weird fa- fan world where it's very few and far in between, like they say the Dallas Cowboys, where right. fans still stick with the team for, even through their shitty seasons. <laughs> um, or, or 40 of them in the Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, I mean when, when you look at the Red Sox, like they always had a dedicated fan base. They always did. And you look at the Boston Celtics, like they still had fans and you still have yeah. that fan base that shows that, yeah, there's always going to be casuals. There's always going to be people that jump on <clears throat> with the Patriots. It would be interesting next year if they have another bad season to see who jumps off. But I think football right. really, the people still want to go to football games. Totally. They still enjoy the league. They want to watch other players. You look at golden state. I mean, they just built a new arena. I, I think like in there's, yeah, Curry, their crowds in Oakland and they're in San Francisco now. And, and Curry's an aging star, as you said, he, his time is ticking a little bit. I mean, that's somebody that – and he's someone that doesn't need to play basketball anymore. He has nothing else to really play for. Like, he really doesn't. Unlike LeBron, like, he's still got shit He's got some records he's chasing. He's still got a pass yeah. to Allen. And, and he's – and oh, uh, Curry. Yeah, but I just look at that as, like, the fan base. Like, they, their dynasty comes and goes, and people yeah. forget, and people move on. It's just it's just funny how it works. We live through it, and, it, and you got everyone got sick of it. But it's just funny how, how it comes and goes. I want to ask you this. Steve Nash, do you give him any credit for the Brooklyn Nets? Like, you got you. I know. Yeah, I, that's see, that's one of those things that frustrated me. Um, one of one of Kyrie's dozens, hundreds of just awful media comments. Just the one from this offseason where he said, um, after they hired Steve Nash, like, and Kyrie, like, quote said, like, I don't see us as having a head coach. Like, I'm the coach. KD's the coach. Like, that. What are you doing, guy? You just hired Steve yeah. Nash as a coach. Steve Nash deserves all the credit in the world for, for getting these two superstars and having the rest of the team work well with them. Like that team looks ready to go on a championship run tomorrow. If they, 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 they do, they do. After watching that game, I'm like that you, you, and it was Who's great. I think, the, I think the announcers, you were even kind of saying the announcers were even kind of saying it to them. Like, uh, you know, both of them have something to really prove and they right. both are NBA champions. So it's yeah. like, but they both kind of did it without doing it themselves. Right. And I, they had a and, lot of help in the process. They had a lot of help. And I, and I think, and even though you can say they're helping each other, I mean, they, they have a lot to prove, whether it's Kevin Durant's injuries and coming in and being a snake, whether it's Kyrie Irving always being in the shadows of LeBron and he couldn't handle it on his own. And they both took the time off. I mean, they look hungry. And, yeah. and it would not shock me if you see a Brooklyn Nets versus Los Angeles Lakers uh, NBA championship this something. year. And, and as a as a Boston fan, so it's like, in terms of when it comes down to Celtics, right, and fandom, I Brooklyn's weird because they're still a newer team. Like, right. I mean, in terms of, like, the location, uh, I have some fond memories of Brooklyn because I went to SummerSlam there and stuff like that. I've gone to Nets games and, and shit. So uh, I also – I, I also like Brooklyn for some reason. I don't, I don't know. I just like that area. I like that area a lot. I just think it would be good for the NBA to have a thriving New York team um, totally. there. They need that. Like the NBA needs, like I'll support shit like that. Like I support Trevor Lawrence to the New York Jets because I want to see New York. I want to see, right. I want to see the conference get better. I want, I want to lose to them because I want to be pissed off because I want to beat them. Like that's what yeah. you want to do. You can have that view, but I, as long as New York sucks at everything, I am yeah. totally on board. You, you don't have to say like, say less. I don't like. I don't mind if they go there and they lose the the, the finals. I mean, they have it. They have a le- respectable, legitimate team right there. Right. Um, the problem you it, run into there is the Brooklyn Nets and Celtics. Where you remember the fateful trade? You remember the the Jason Terry, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce trade back in the day? Yeah. That's Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But Celtics haven't won anything since. 
I know. So it's it's one of those things that if Brooklyn goes further, though, right. it's a good case that you can go to Danny Ainge and be like, what the hell happened? Yeah, it, <laughs> like, that's exactly all... like what yeah. happened. We made like you made this trade with it with the hopes of winning a title this year, next year, whatever it may be. Like you wanted like that. That was supposed to decimate the Nets. It did decimate them. But somehow they're back. I don't I don't know the story. I don't know the trades, the moves they've made, GM, front office, whatever. Like, they're making the right moves and it's 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 a good look. Like with Todd, like I don't want Philly to go to the championship. No. Like that's 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 a city I don't want to succeed. Yeah. Although I picked them to do very well this year this year. <laughs> pick them to be the one seed. That's that's a I little better than very the well. Well, I'm a, I'm a believer in Doc Rivers as a okay. coach, and I think this is a good fresh start for him. It's I have no bad blood or no hate for Doc Rivers. I think No, yeah, you and me both. It, yeah, it's and and I'll su- I'll support him in that sense that I hope he does well himself individually. I'm not rooting totally. for the Sixers. I'm just I just think that they can put something together and and they and this is gonna have to be the year they do it too. That's another team that you've been kind of you know fumbling around a little bit. Like when are you guys gonna make the push? When right. are you guys gonna make the move? I mean they're due for Eastern Conference they final. Won. They're they're due they're due for games since Kawhi hit the shot. Yeah, I mean they're they're due like they're due to get to the they're due to get to the finals themselves as a as a team as an organization they're due so as the again the Celtics it's like you've been there you've been there oh oh shit Brooklyn just did this the Sixers are oh wow they're making a couple moves Milwaukee is still there the Miami right. Heat are coming off a of finals uh, appearance so they can they can be a their contender you never know one of these teams that end up just coming up and doing something like Indiana could just go on a run. Yeah. You never know. know. Like, they'll, never they'll know. probably be there. They're all. They always find their way in. They're they always find their way in. Teams. So these these teams could always make a, you know, a trade or something like that at right. at, at the trade deadline. So it's a lot of questions. There's a lot of question marks, but Brooklyn looks really good. Like again, it's a long season. We'll see what happens. But hey, at least we got we we got sports back. Just to to wrap up, I we, know we're gonna we're gonna mention all four sports here. Just rapid fire. Alex Cora is still the manager of the Boston Red Sox. The Boston Bruins got a schedule that looks like a baseball schedule because they're playing like series and the way they're doing travel because uh, they don't trust their players the way they the NBA trusts James Harden. Uh, so they're staying in like the same city doing series. It's, it's interesting. It's worth a worth a look. I think they're doing a 50 game season. Um, yeah, 56 games, and I can't 56. believe they're still sticking with Tuka Rask. I I, oh. I can't believe after what he did. An- Anti Tuka over here, right? Yeah, I still I, like I still Tuka. am, but. He proved me wrong. Just like, just you gotta show yeah. up and really, you get, you gotta, you gotta be a good goalie this year. Who, you gotta who, who do you trust wrong. more, Cam Newton or Tuka Rask? <laughs> I like that actually. I actually like that. Who do you trust more right now? Who's more likable? Uh, I, I think uh, that's tough. It's a tough, tough one. Who do you trust? Who do you trust in a big game moment, Tuka Rask <laughs> or or Cam Newton? Seriously, neither of them won anything really. Yeah, I'd say they've all they've all gotten right to the top, but fallen like a few minutes short. Like Cam Newton, Super Bowl. Both of them giving up short. on their teams. Yeah, like, they just like that. Super like, Rask, Game Seven. It just you sucks because I think if Tuka played in a bubble, they would have fucking they would have won something. He's kind of left. Year. Yeah, he left them high and dry. I think they would have won him. I'd stick Tuka. I'd take Tuka. Okay, uh, that's the uh, that's my one Bruins take. That's I, I've never I've never liked the fact that they call it. Uh, the perfection line because I feel like that puts it up with like a level you think like Golden State Warriors again like the yeah the, yeah the the Hampton Five like you expect them to be so per- like perfect they're called the perfection line they're Pasternak Marchand and, and Bergeron you expect them to never lose again but that's just the way hockey goes so um, just to wrap up here you got got any final thoughts oh um wow final thoughts uh Santa. Santa came to the Babikin household. My final thought is uh, we had a very Merry Christmas here at the Babikin household. It was, it was nice doing it with the girls, spending time with them. Again, I got my dad dressed up as Santa Claus. <laughs> it was, uh, it's great because especially uh, when you have your parents out there, uh, me being a new parent now this year, uh, it's crazy because of, you know, all the extra things that go with it as, as being a dad and getting things ready. But, uh, you know, just know that your parents out there, I'm sure some families out there, uh, they do, they try to do a lot for you. They try to, they, they can do a lot for you. So this year having, um, my parents be grandparents, uh, I, I made a huge deal that I wanted my dad to dress up in a Santa costume. So okay. I had my Santa costume that when me and Corey went to the game a couple of years ago, but I think I threw it out when I moved from Everett to Bridgewater. Uh, and I freaked out the day on, on Christmas Eve. I was like freaking out. Like, oh, I thought I had it. Like, where did I put it? 
and my brother luckily had a Santa costume like he had it 10 years ago and he's been sitting there and it was it was all clean and everything and he goes I got it don't worry and we got them all dressed up so it was it was just it was just uh my mom actually texted me today and was like that was the best Christmas we've had in a long time and I, a lot of people don't know like in terms of Christmas like I work like every holiday like nine out of the last 10 years I've worked every freaking Thanksgiving and Christmas so it, it was really special. Uh, it was a special time to do that. Um, cause every year, man, like I know what it's like to like work. And I also know what it's like to be a little lonely on Christmas. Like you go on your social media, you see everyone celebrating, getting all these awesome gifts and, and this and that. So, um, I, I've been through that side too. So, and if you're, and if you feel that way too, never feel afraid to like, just reach out and we can always oh. talk and stuff. So like that we're always open about that. So community, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, you know, and uh, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. I'm I am a Merry Christmas guy. I am not a Happy Holidays guy. As am I. <laughs> listen, so when it comes to Happy, listen, when, I, when I'm at work, people say Happy. I say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, because we're we're right here. We're at Christmas right. time. I'll it's say Christmas. Happy it was Holidays. Christmas yesterday, and people said Happy Holidays. Like we know hey, what. I'll say Happy Holidays to you if it's November before Thanksgiving. Right. And I mean, I'll say Happy Thanksgiving, but I'll say Happy Holidays if I know that. You're going to be away, and I'm not seeing you for the next month and a half yeah. to two months, like that. Because then yeah. you're just, it's just all we're, in we're, one. We're, we're all in one. But exactly. It's Thanksgiving week, have a happy Thanksgiving. It's the Christmas week, have a Merry Christmas. Right. Like, like you don't say Merry Christmas on December 12th. Like you wait till the week of. Like, nah, that's, you, that's you Merry know Christmas it's close. As soon as December hits. No, I I'll say Happy Holidays only because yeah. some people might celebrate Kwanzaa. Some people that's might what? celebrate. Hanukkah so I, I'll give it that I think once those pass though once it's Christmas like five days to Christmas it's Merry Christmas Merry Christmas I did, Christmas I did Instagram way. live I was like you have to say Merry Christmas all right like I, <laughs> it, it's and I, it, I, I do it's it's Brendan is they gonna they, they might they might cancel Christmas one day they might say you nope, never know you can't right. say Merry Christmas I wouldn't that's be surprised what, that's, that's how our jobs are I mean even when I worked at Market Basket like this was 10 10 years ago they said we got a note saying you have to say happy holidays because you have to please everybody you Gosh. can't say Merry Christmas because certain people don't celebrate Merry the, we don't celebrate Christmas. To try to cancel Happy Holidays instead of <sighs> Christmas. I know we should. I think Happy Holidays is just you're, you're lumping everybody together. You're yeah. lumping everything at once. It's yeah, just I don't know. too it's much. Too much thing. assuming. But uh, final thought is it was a Merry Christmas. It was a good time. See family. I hope everyone stayed safe out there. Um, it was in quarantine now. If you traveled near and far, but. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas from uh, all of us here at, at Boston's Big Three. We hope you guys had a, a joyful holiday season, um, and that uh, this new year treats you well is coming up. So I think we got a, we got a few things up our sleeves to wrap up the year, um, wrap up 2020, kick it to the curb, like we said. But uh, it's been fun. Thanks, thanks for rocking with us for 85 episodes now. 85. Fun Get a hundred. Hit a hundred. A hundred's gonna come up, likely like spring break, March, February. Yeah. Something Hopefully, like if we start banging it out a little bit more, it's, got, it's coming up. So, uh, keep riding the wave, rocking with us, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Dipset.